It's been the weather story around here for years. Drought and the summer heat waves that come with it. But change is in the air. Tonight, we have a forecast unlike any we've delivered in years. A scenario that could affect each and every one of us and welcomed by virtually all of us. Before we get to that, an in-depth reminder of where we are. And for most of us, it's a good place. For the first time in nearly five years, most of our Central Texas area is officially drought free. And tonight to explain it all, we have in-depth first warning weather team coverage across our viewing area. Mark Monstrola joins us from Marble Falls. David Yeomans is in South Travis County. And Rosie Newberry joins us from Lake Travis, part of the Highland Lakes chain where the drought has yet to relent. Rosie? The Highland Lakes are the source of water for more than one million Central Texans. Emerald Point here on Lake Travis is one of the most beautiful spots in the hill country, with the lake almost 60% empty. It's been worse. Less than two years ago, the lake was only four feet above its all-time low. It's been years since it was last full. Here's Emerald Point in May 2007. To fill this lake, where we don't need water restrictions anymore, it needs to rain a lot in the right places. Several recent floods have been just below Lake Travis, which needs at least 218 billion more gallons of water, enough to fill 327,000 Olympic-sized pools. Since this is part of a lake chain, experts at the Lower Colorado River Authority say the rain needs to fall in any of four basins, Pecan Bayou, Lake Buchanan, Lake LBJ, or Lake Travis. The water will trickle down, raising the level of the reservoirs. In fact, the LCRA says now is the best time to beat the drought in the Highland Lakes. At Lake Travis, I'm Rosie Newberry, KXAN First Warning Weather. And finally, we're having the rain we're supposed to in spring. Thanks, Rosie. Not everyone's water, though, comes from Lake Travis. There is water right under our feet. Aquifers, the source of water for tens of thousands in our area, especially down in South Austin, where our David Yeomans found until very recently they've been stretched to their limits. Well, the Edwards Aquifer supplies drinking water for 60,000 people in Travis and Hayes counties. I'm standing on top of one of many caves that you'll find around the area, which is an easy way for rain to get into the underground reservoir. An aquifer, by the way, is just layers of underground rock filled with holes that can store a whole lot of water. When it rains in Austin, it brings a smile to Brian Smith's face. Rainfall then leads to flow in the creeks, which leads to recharge. Dr. Smith has studied the Edwards Aquifer, which feeds Barton Springs, for 14 years. In 2015, we've seen just enough rain to get us out of drought, and we're continuing to improve the situation with each little rain that we get. But other parts of the state haven't been so lucky. Once we begin to go into the 2000 level time frame, we begin to see it catching the entire state. Major droughts, all the wildfires. Byron Tapley designs satellites, and he's in charge of the one that monitors how much water we have in the state, above ground and below. We observed a very uh, uh, ongoing reduction essentially in the total water over the state. But after a wet spring, rain is not the problem. The soil is essentially dry enough that most of it is being essentially absorbed near the surface. Meaning it hasn't been able to fill up those underground reservoirs and a lot more rain is still needed to make real progress. In Southern Travis County, David Yeomans, First Warning Weather. As David said, there is only one solution for our depleted lakes and aquifers, rain. And our weather pattern in recent months is just what the doctor ordered, possibly setting us up for a chain of events like in the summer of 2007. Mark Monstrola is in Marble Falls to describe the year without summer. It's a once in every 500 years event. 19 inches of rain in just six hours, and it happened right here in late June, spilling into Lake Marble Falls. An avalanche of water triggered deadly flooding in the hill country, even flooding Lake Travis. That historical night is what many remember, but there was something else that made the summer of 07 unforgettable. Amazing summertime temperatures, 51 days in a row below normal. The high never even hit 95 degrees until August 1st and not a single 100 degree day that summer at Austin's airport. How did that happen? Rain and lots of it. By the first day of summer, 31 inches had already fallen at ABIA and the rain would fall in Central Texas for 38 of the next 42 days. Here in 2015, we're noticing some similarities. El Nino patterns from both then and now are similar in structure and strength. 
rainfall and temperature patterns too. Days with measurable rain almost exactly the same. Average high temperatures from January to April. This year, 67.9 degrees. In 07, 67.8 degrees. While it's unlikely we see a magnitude of rain like they saw here in Marble Falls eight years ago, if we get anywhere close to Camp Mabry's 18 inches from that summer, this one will be memorable too. For Marble Falls, Mark Monstrola, KXAN First Warning Weather. That seems like a long time ago. Not only have we not seen anything like that summer in eight years, we have lived through the exact opposite, historic heat waves and drought year after year. But tonight, a forecast we've been longing to make. Could this summer be a throwback to 2007? Brutal summers have become so common that someone who moved to Austin after the summer of 07 <laughs> hasn't known anything else. Children born here in 2008, now in second grade, have lived through six of the hottest seven summers ever recorded in Austin since 1854. It's really, really hot. <laughs> it's unbearable. <laughs> and no one who was here will forget the summer of 2011. 90 days, 100 degrees or hotter. An average high in August of 105 degrees. And almost every other heat record shattered. But the approaching summer has the potential to be the solar opposite. The similarities to 2007 are striking. Heavy spring rains, our first El Nino in five years, and several climate model simulations all suggest a long-awaited reprieve is on the way. For those reasons, for the first time in eight years, we are forecasting a cooler than normal summer. Make no mistake, there will be oppressive heat at times but it shouldn't be as unbearable as in recent years. And it gets better. With a wetter than normal summer forecast too, it's possible, like in 2007, we might actually have some soaking summer rain. And tonight, even more evidence that something unusual is a real possibility this summer. New climate simulations say the Pacific Ocean may be getting so warm that we see the strongest El Nino since 1997. What happened that summer? Historic June floods in the hill country causing the third worst flood ever on Lake Travis. The lake was almost 75 feet higher than it is today. So Jim, is this a sure thing for this summer? Never a sure thing, but with all these variables in play, it is hard to imagine that this coming summer will have very many 100 degree days and pretty likely this will be the most tolerable summer since 2007. Well, it is the spring weather that we've been going through that's been really rough for some of the state. Today, reports of a small tornado and funnels east of Austin in Bastrop County and in Giddings. Minor damage there, but this month, devastating tornadoes in North Texas. KXAN took a tour on the ground and in the air of the aftermath in the town of Van this week. Our full in-depth report on state leaders' response, plus an interactive slideshow right now on KXAN.com.